Okay. Yes, doesn't have slides, does it? It does not. <sighs> okay, let's talk. Training infrastructure as a service. This is a really cool feature of Galaxy that we've built. Um, it's something that I designed and developed when I was working at usegalaxy.eu to support all of our training needs. We ran a lot of different training events and we found that sometimes the cluster would be full. Sometimes someone would have launched a large number of jobs and that our students would sit there waiting and they'd have no way to run their jobs and they just have to wait. And the teachers would be very confused and worried because the teachers never had any visibility into the cluster or how things were behaving. So the teachers would say, well, let's keep waiting. Maybe we take a coffee break, maybe something like this. We don't know, we just don't know. And so we built TIOS to address this problem. TIOS, Westers all of the jobs onto separate infrastructure. So if you have two compute nodes, you can say use one as TIOS and say if the person is doing a training, all of their jobs go to this dedicated compute node or a compute cluster. And we use it for that purpose, just to say all of these jobs can run immediately and only the people who are waiting are the other students in that class, which makes life a lot nicer. So this tutorial obviously requires you've done a lot of things before. It requires that you have a setting, set up Galaxy, you have a working Galaxy, you have a job configuration file, you know how to write dynamic destinations, and perhaps that you've also run jobs in Pulsar. So let's get started with this really quickly. This is how TIOS works. All of your users of Galaxy, they all go into the same Galaxy server. They see the same interface. But what happens on the back end is that some of those jobs are put onto a different queue or a different cluster or a different node. All of these are options. It's up to you how you configure it specifically. At EU, what we did was we said, okay, all of the jobs should go primarily onto our dedicated compute nodes. But if, they're, if those are full, then we'll let them execute on some of the main cluster as well, if there's space. So all of the users see the same interface. They have all of their histories, they have all of their data sets, um, they have all of their normal permissions to access data sets if you're teaching with restricted data. But in the back end, secretly hidden from them, their jobs are sequestered onto the special queue that should be a lot faster. So let's get TIOS set up. First, we'll add our requirement and we'll install it. Next, we need to set up some group variables. So I'm going to open up my group var server and at the bottom, I'm going to paste in all of these TIOS settings. This will set up the TIOS directory into slash OPT TIOS. It'll set up a user. It'll pull the latest version of the code base and it'll set an admin user and admin password. Additionally, we need to make some more changes. We need to grant some permissions on the database. So at the start of the tour, at the start of this week, we set up these PostgreSQL users and objects. And here we set up the TIOS user. But now we also need to grant them some privileges. So we set up the Galaxy user in the Galaxy database. Now we're adding this TIOS user and we're going to add these permissions. This is a nice thing you can do with this role. You can say that this user only has permission for a very, very limited set of things that they can do. So for instance, here, the TIOS role can only access, can only run the select command on the user session and job tables. So they can't change anything in any of those tables, but they can read the data from them. And this is nice to prevent them, prevent any, any errors in the code from becoming bigger problems. So we need to add the role to the end of the playbook. I'll add that down there. And then we need to add the configuration for the service to the Nginx role. Uh, templates Nginx. I'm just pasting that in before the very last bracket. And this will say, okay, everything coming into the location TIOS gets redirected to the service. We serve our static files, and then we also redirect things from join training. And that's it.
we're ready to run our playbook. We'll let that run in the background. So now that TOS will be set up, there will be a couple of new routes that will be available. There is the TOS new route, which lets you uh, register a new training with the server. There's the TIAS administration page. There's a stats page. So you can see like the overall statistics of the server. There's also a calendar page. I'm gonna show you the EU calendar pages and stats pages quickly. So here's what the EU um, TIAS looks like. You can see that most of our trainings are in Europe, but we also support some in US and EU. That one's bright blue because it's actually part of France. We've provided VMs for a massive number of days, massive number of compute hours have been provided. We've taught so many students and there are six events today. You can see where all the events are from and over on the calendar page, you can see how many events are running on any given day. This can give you as an admin, if you're running a lot of these events, an idea of when are good times to make uh, changes to your server or not. So I'm going to pause for a second to wait for that to load. Okay, and looks like that it's finished. You can see the TIOS got installed, all sorts of different configuration got installed for it. If we run systemctl status TIOS, we should be able to see that it's running and working. Let's have a look at the Nginx configuration. Okay, let's see how that looks. Um, looks like Galaxy is running. And then if we access the new TIOS route, we should see an information page about what TIOS is and how it works, along with an apply now button if you want to register a new training instance. Some of these are templated variables, so we've just written default or admin at localhost. You can customize this to your needs. There are a lot of different variables that can be set. So I'm going to register a quick training. My name's Helena, that is my email address. I'm going to do a testing training or let's call it GAT since we're at the admin training. And here we can write something about our training that would be helpful to the administrators who are going to judge this training and say if they're going to support it or not. Um, some admin training will start in January and end next year. Normally you'd specify shorter dates, of course, or whoever's registering for it, it will. And I'm in the Netherlands currently. So one of the things that TIOS does is it just handles where the jobs should be dispatched and if the training is enabled or not. If you are an administrator though, one of the things you need to know sometimes is how many resources do you expect this training to need? And you need to compare this with how many resources can you expect this training to require or how many that you can offer. So you can, have some questions here for your trainee or your trainers who are going to be submitting these forms saying, oh, I'm going to be using this URL for my training material. And then you as an admin will know, okay, if they're using this training material, these are the tools, these are, this is how much memory I allocate to that tool. And you can start to think about how many resources you might want to offer them. And very important question, how many people? We'll give it a training identifier like a GAT. And we have some questions about advertising, which is a common requirement. Again, all of this is just defaulting to use galaxy.eu, but you can change this as you like. And when you then you click submit and it'll tell you, congrats, you've registered training. So let's go approve that training now. So I'll go to the admin interface of TIOS. Um, the password was at, was the username and password we set in the group variables you can see in the end of the group virus galaxy server, we said admin and change me. Maybe you changed it, it would be a good idea. And then you should be able to log in with that. Um, okay, that didn't work. I'm going to debug this quickly. Okay, I just typed the password incorrectly. Oh look, it works. <laughs> okay, so this is the default Django administration. TIOS is built on the Django Python web framework. We just did that to make life easy for us. You'll find all of your trainings under trainings here. Here you can see the identifier of the training, the, the keyword that'll be used to reference it. 
their email address of the submitter if you need to contact them with questions. You can see things like how many days since the application was received, how many days until the event. So if you have events in the future, you can approve them in advance. And the state, has it been processed yet? Has it been injected or approved? If you click on the GAD on the training identifier there, they'll be taken to this page where you can see information about the training and if you need to change anything for your records. And then at the bottom, you can decide if you want to approve or reject it. So at the EU, we get a large number of training requests, and then we get to approve or reject them and email the administrators accordingly. So I'm going to mark this as approved. And then I'm going to go back to Galaxy to actually join the training. So part of TIOS is this URL slash uh, join minus training. And then an identifier. In our case, the training identifier was GAT. So I'm going to paste that in. and it gives me a message. Congratulations, you're registered in GAT. So what's happened here is that my user has been put in a group named training minus GAT in the Galaxy database itself. And then we'll be able to make decisions on where jobs should run based on that training, that training group membership. Additionally, we get this really nice status dashboard, so if we, which is not working yet. So let's go see it in the admin interface first. And under groups, we'll now see training gap. And this has one user, my admin user, the TIOS or join site. So we just went to join training gap. And you notice we didn't have to log in or anything. What happens with TIOS is it knows who you are because it's running underneath Galaxy's path. So it has access to the Galaxy session cookie. And it's taken that session cookie and decoded it and figured out my username and then registered my username in the database with that, with that, um, that training. Next, we will set up my jobs to run somewhere special. So you can see how that, let's get that job configuration sorted out. So we're going to create a new dynamic job rule. I'm calling mine hogwarts.py. You're welcome to call it whatever you want. Mostly this naming convention is just taken from um, at usegalaxy.eu. I called it the sorting hat that decides where, which house or which compute cluster the different training jobs should go to. I thought it was very clever at the time. So we'll see what happens here is that in the sorting hat we get the app as well as the user information and if there's no user or the user is anonymous we'll just send them to the default destination of Slurm. However if they're not anonymous if there is a user we'll collect all of their roles and if any of the roles start with the training prefix so we know it's one of the training events then we're going to send them to the Slurm 2C destination or Pulsar or something else. And this just lets, this starts to give you an idea of how you can use this. So you can use this dynamic rule and say, if they're one of the training jobs, send them to a different cluster. You can get more fancy, of course, and say, if they're one of this specific training um, event, send them to this specific cluster, something like that. With use galaxy.eu, we use HT Condor for our cluster. And so, we can label individual machines for individual purposes. We label some of them as, okay, training GAT, they'd be labeled. And then we send specific Condor information in the job configuration. And there we say, okay, this needs this extra requirement. It's required that it should run on the training job or the training cluster. Things like this are possible, but they're also very cluster specific. So you'll have to make a decision per how your cluster looks and how you want it to behave. So I'm going to open up the Galaxy servers and we need to add our new dynamic rule. Again, make sure these minuses match up. They may or may not in the training materials because they get updated at different times and just make sure that they're all consistent. Otherwise you'll have issues. I'm going to double check my uh, job configuration to make sure that the Slurm and Slurm 2C destinations are still there and functional. They look good. I didn't change that in a different training. And now in the job configuration, we need to add our new destination. So this will be a destination. I'll just put it down at the end with the other dynamic destinations and indent it properly. 
Okay. And this is just another of the Python destinations. So like the admin only destination we wrote before, now we have this sorting hat destination. And then I'm going to make that the default. So all of our jobs will go through the sorting hat. Way back up here at the top, the default destination should now be sorting hat. And so we've defined one Python function that will decide where all of our jobs go. And all of our tools should go through there and say, OK, does this need um, this cluster or that cluster? When you are doing this in production, though, one common thing is that the upload jobs are a little bit special, right? They should stay on a local cluster. They shouldn't be sent somewhere remote. That can be an issue sometimes in, say, Pulsar. So let's run our playbook. Let's build playbook galaxy.yaml. And this will set up Galaxy to start processing these jobs in a different way. And then we can get started running some jobs. I'll plan some uploads. And whenever this is finished running, then we will kick off the jobs and we can see where they get sent. The upload jobs should be sent to our default um, Slurm cluster, but with one core while other jobs should be sent to another location because I'm a special user and I'm in the group. Okay, you'll notice this big error message. Um, this is a consequence of how Django works. In Django, there is an easy way to create a new user. You run a script to change the password and create them, but if you run it again, it'll fail because the user is already created. So we have a task that we've defined in, in Ansible to create this user, and it'll try and create the super user every time. But because the email address or the username is not unique, it'll fail. So we allow this task to fail. And you notice that with the ignoring statement. Then Ansible has said, OK, something went wrong here, clearly, but I'm going to let this fail. So I've added some jobs. Do we have the digest tool? Yeah, I'm going to run the digest tool on some of our data sets. I'll just select all the hashes. I like to use this tool for testing. It's just an easy way to say, OK, did it? Are things working? I'm looking at the information for one of my uploads. One core was allocated, so it was definitely sent to the one node Slurm cluster, one core Slurm cluster. And then we see some other jobs that are waiting to run. Uh, okay, and in the background, the singularity container is being unpacked to run these jobs. That's the delay here. Once that's complete, these jobs should get sent off to the Slurm 2 core cluster. And we can already go ahead and look at it, and you'll see the native specification down here at the very bottom saying two cores per task. Oh, no, an error occurred. If you've never seen an error before, you must provide an input file name. Okay, something is going wrong there on some of them. Uh, the data sets may be missing or something. Anyway, for some of them it worked. That's the important thing. And now I'm going to show you the TIOS dashboard. So we kind of skipped over this at the time. Let's come back to it now. This is the TIOS dashboard. This is something that's available to everyone. So the teachers and the students in the training, if they like, can see this dashboard and get information about how their students are doing. For something like when you're in a pandemic, this is incredibly important, incredibly useful for remote teaching. We developed this actually as a result of a remote teaching project where we were teaching students in classrooms across Europe. 
and we said well we don't know how the students are doing we will tell them run a step we'll tell them run the upload job or something and then we have no visibility into how they're doing as teachers so we developed TIOS to work around that this will give your teachers visibility into how students are behaving they'll get this nice dashboard with an overview of how many students are registered so they can tell if not all of the students are registered in the TIOS yet they can say, oh, you need to register so your jobs run in time. You're, you don't have to, but if you don't, your jobs are going to be slower. They can see this overview by tool. They can see, OK, for that digest command that I just told everyone to run, two are in OK, but three are in error state. So maybe I need to like discuss this tool more or help students figure out what went wrong and discuss that with the class. Or for the uploads, jobs, that they're all in the OK state. They get a really quick state overview of how many are in each state and then they get this job queue view this tells the teacher a hashed user identifier that changes regularly but it's consistent within this interface so this teacher can say oh these students got this result or i can see if i have 10 students i can see oh the 10 times the fast queue tool has been run and maybe one of them failed or one student is failing consistently, something like this. They can see how long ago that job was created, if it was in an error state or if it was okay, and the job runner ID, which if they need help debugging, they can always pass this to one of the cluster administrators or the Galaxy administrator to figure out what went wrong. Additionally, we also show a workflow in vacation queue. So if you make a workflow, I'm gonna make a really quick workflow. with just this digest tool again, because I'm such a fan. I'm going to give it an input data set. And now maybe it'll run digest twice. Especially for bigger workflows that have a lot more steps like this, um, it can be a bit harder to see what's going on in the interface. But with the workflow invocation view for the tutorials that use workflows, you can really easily see, oh, this many students have run the workflow they're supposed to run now. Okay, let's click run. I'm gonna go back to the status page and you'll see, okay, two jobs have been created now. One's running, one's okay. You can see in this interface, the new jobs being created, running and being marked as okay. And down here at this bottom, you can see the workflow and vacation queue. So for some of the tutorials that are on the Galaxy Training Network, we tell the students, hey, upload this workflow file and then you can uh, do part of this training in a faster manner than having to configure all of these tools over and over again. And with that, you've set up TIOS. So this has the TIOS service at slash TIOS, which has information. There's the uh, new page for registering new trainings for your teachers. There's the admin page reviewing the trainings, going through reviewing, approving, canceling, etc. And then there is the join training page, which lets the students join the training and the status page, which lets teachers see how students are doing. And because this page is public, of course, that's why the user identifier is hashed. And we can go back to the join page just see, yeah, this is how TIOS works. It's one of the best things I did while I was at usegalaxy.e. This makes training completely changed for teaching, especially especially in a pandemic or in remote teaching times when you need to see what your students are doing and be sure, relatively sure, that their jobs will run on time. So as always, please give us feedback. Let us know what you thought of this content, if there's anything we need to change, etc. Thank you so much and enjoy your weekend.